We're going to take you back to one of this morning's top stories. Four women who accused Indiana's Attorney General Curtis Hill of groping them are now suing him and the state. They say Hill inappropriately touched them during a party at a bar in Indianapolis in March of 2018. This has been widely, widely covered in media all across the country. Three of them are with me this morning with their attorneys. So we have Nikki, Nikki Da Silva, Samantha Lozano, Gabby, we're going to go by Gabby McLemore, and then we have Hannah, uh, Hannah Kaufman Joseph, their attorney this morning. Ladies, thanks for joining me this morning. Thank you. I know this has been, a, has been a difficult year for you uh, in all ways, shapes, and forms. Uh, Nikki, I'll start with you since you're here in the closest. What, and, and all State House uh, employees, by the way, all working within the State House for their profession, what have you seen, professionally speaking, uh, backlash from this or what you all have said as retaliation? Sure. Um, I think one of the most notable things, and I mentioned this yesterday in our press conference, um, is that some people have kind of shied away from going through the proper channels as far as scheduling meetings and doing the normal work, which has kind of impeded my ability to do my job. So they don't want to work with you directly? They feel like maybe it would make me feel uncomfortable asking me to to set up certain meetings or do certain things, um, particularly if it's related to the Attorney General's office. Would that be uncomfortable for you? I want to be able to still do my job, mm -hmm. um, and I would prefer that people would continue to treat me in the same manner. Mm -hmm. And have you felt that you've had support going through this process, or has it felt lonely? Um, it definitely helps to have other people who understand what you're going through. Um, and I think for the most part, I've seen um, support from my friends and family. And, and definitely my boss has been, my, my immediate supervisor and my senator has been very supportive. And your job at the State House is? So I'm a legislative assistant to one of the state senators in the majority caucus. Okay. And now, Samantha, let's go to you. What repercussions have you experienced? I would say that I've experienced similar situations to Nikki where um, people do go around me um, and I feel like I've received a little bit of backlash in the sense that it's my fault that there wasn't a party this year or in the sense that staff don't get invited to as many functions anymore. When you came forward publicly with the accusations, was this a fear of yours that this would happen? Um, to a certain extent, yes. I, uh, I just wasn't ready, but it was now or never. Mm -hmm. And Gabby, you've been uh, very vocal about this, and even in tears mm -hmm. yesterday during the news conference, how it's impacted you. Professionally speaking, what have you endured? So it's way more than what happens the day of the event. Um, it's not just those few minutes where um, you were touched by the Attorney General, but it's every day since then. Anytime the office gets brought up or Sine die gets brought up, you're <coughs> taken back to that night and you can't really get past it. <coughs> Oftentimes I feel like that a woman's fear is to not be believed, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. It seems that multiple people, dozens of people corroborated the stories, either saw it happen or were in immediate contact with you after it happened. That doesn't seem to be the frustration here. Yeah, I think Hannah worded it perfectly yesterday in the press conference that it's not, the question is not whether we've been believed or not, it's what we're going to do about it. And I've also read that you all have experienced um, some anonymous people write in and say, hey, thank you, because this happened to me too. How has that felt? I think, um, if anything, it helped kind of for me tell me that I was doing the right thing, mm -hmm. that we had to continue doing what we were doing because this has been happening for a very long time and there have been dozens of women, and not just related to the particular person that we um, have had this experience with, the Attorney General, um, but that this is a pervasive issue within um, our workplace culture and it needs to stop. So, I mean, for example, there was one day I was walking into work and a woman came up to me when I entered the building and just came and gave me a big hug and started crying and said, you know, thank you for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't have the courage to come forward when this happened to me um, when I was your age, you know, and I still work here. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for doing that. And so having people tell you that lets you know that we're doing sure. something big here and we have to continue to push forward because there's no other way to change the culture if we don't. And there are power in numbers. There is power in numbers. Um, what, what change do you want to see as far as culture within the State House? Samantha, I'll direct this to you. Mm -hmm. uh, how is it now and, and what needs to happen for it to feel safer? 
I think there needs to be new policies set in place um, that will both affect members and um, um, state staff because at this point I feel like people are starting to leave their jobs because of the work culture and that's how um, the state house is going to lose one of its best employees because of the change that's not occurring. And speaking of policy, Hannah, I'll bring you in for this sure. because uh, you're the legal mind mm -hmm. behind all of this. How can <clears throat> this change policy? Well, there are so many things that, that need to be done to improve the, the state house culture and really our clients would view that as a win. Any, any improvements to how sexual harassment and retaliation are reported and dealt with in, this, in the Indiana State House will change, I think we think will affect change for employees. Mm -hmm. One of those areas um, that, that has come up is the question of the consistency in the policies themselves. And, and one, of the, one of the things that didn't come up at all yesterday when we talked about this, but we think is an important issue, is that the training on sexual harassment alone is so substandard. Um, our, I was stunned when our clients told us that they had their their training on sexual harassment consisted of a attorney with the state house reading the sexual harassment policy verbatim out loud. That was the training, literally reading the the written policy, not answering questions, not having discussions, not role playing, or having some kind of meaningful give and take about what is sexual harassment and how is it prevented. Mm -hmm. That's happening in private employers all over the world, particularly in the United States where um, private employers have really gotten the memo on this, mm -hmm. but for some reason the Indiana legislature and the State House as a whole has not. It's so important, I think, to put uh, a definition to this that is easy to understand mm -hmm. because whether it's a hand on the back or a, a very inappropriate groping, <laughs> It can mean so many different things, mm -hmm. and there is an intention there, I think, to exert power, and there's also an implication to women who are in their mind, as Gabby, you put it, thinking, oh my gosh, I hope people don't think that I am enjoying this right. to get ahead in life or to do whatever it is that a lot of women are accused of doing, yes. uh, wrongfully so, in many, many circumstances. I applaud you all for doing what you've done, and I know it takes so much courage and a lot of strength. So congratulations, and we'll follow this as it goes through. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Scott? 740 right now, daybreak.